Good morning and thank you for staying with us. This is Plus TV Africa and now we're on to Off the Press where we bring you the headlines in our major dailies and get into reviews and in-depth analysis with our studio guests. Joining me for Off the Press this morning is policy analyst Ifi Oji. Good morning to you, Ifi. And also seated with us this morning is Public Affairs Analyst, Dr. Femi Adegoke. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. And let's get into the dailies this morning. We kick off with the Punch newspaper. Headline to the Punch, Nigeria's rice import declined by 3.7 MMT, says NEPC. And that you find on page 25 in the Punch newspaper. Uzo Dima sworn in begins probe of three ex-governors. Federal government implements finance law, charges 7.5% VAT on transactions. And Armed Forces Day, Buhari, Osimbajo, Lawa and others eulogize fallen heroes. Operation Amotekun, governors to meet Buhari at Soinka, Agbakoba, others lampoon AGF. Southwest operation has come to stay, Noble Loret tells Malami. If political solution fails, we'll meet in court, says Akeru Dolu. Another alleged OEU Randy lecturer placed on half salary and pastor lecturer dragged to court for spreading fake news. Ondo community sees its 150 cows for destroying farmlands. Still in the punch this morning, how NDDC awarded over one trillion naira fraudulent contracts, says the ED. And motorists, commuters spend hours in Lagos about an expressway gridlock. Imo, I have 39 more prophecies, says Mbaka. Interesting headlines in the Punch newspaper this morning. Um, let's let's take off with the operation on Motekun. If you let, let's start with you. What's your reaction to the, the recent happenings unfolding about the operation on Motekun and of course the AGF declaration about it being illegal? I mean, at the end of the day, people are allowed to um, congregate as they as they wish, yeah. and um, you also find that there's nothing within, within the constitution, as as, as they rightly said, that uh, that uh, precludes such an operation. Okay, doctor. Okay, well, I've said it before, it's, uh, it's a two-way thing. The governors, I felt, they didn't do the due diligence. Due diligence. And then the AGF just coming out to give a, a statement that is illegal. I still say, what, were the, what was the federal government looking when all this preparation was going on? And we heard that they had meetings with the police, with the army, and even I, um, one of the governors, the governor's forum chairman, that's uh, the, the governor of Ekiji State, had met with the federal government mm. talking about this uh, Amonteco. So I don't know why it's become illegal. So we see how it unfolds. But now, Akari Dori is saying uh, if the political uh, will fails, yeah, they will they meet, meet in court. court. So I, I mm. guess they should go to court and let the court be able to. Uh, explain to everybody what the law says about such uh, organizations. Yes. Now, if you give, given the AGF's um, comment about it being illegal, but the operations and what the Amotekun as, as a security outfit is meant to carry out, do you see any duplicity of effort between Amotekun state policing and the Nigerian police as obtaining our constitution? Do you see there might be any rise of conflict of interest and, and operations? I mean, when you start having a sort, some sort of um, organizations forming, you know, there's almost at, at that point where there is almost a, a crisis yes. of sorts. And that is why this has um, um, risen at the moment. So I, I, we hope to see that um, this sort of thing does not occur in the future. Let's talk about the federal government implementing um, finance law and charges 7.5% VAT on transactions. Any, mm -hmm. any reactions to this? I mean, we've seen it coming for the last, uh, I think, last quarter of uh, last year. Okay. And I know that that was initially when um, I think the uh, Federal Executive Council met on it and sort of like put their pen to paper in terms of uh, fleshing it out and then uh, having it sit at the floor of the National Assembly. And uh, this is not a, this is not something that has been. Uh, uh, but my, my 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 main issue with it actually is more from a. <coughs> from an implementing, implementation point of view, an execution okay. point of view. Yes. So I know, like, for example, in Ghana, they have double digits for uh, this uh, for VAT. VAT. Yeah, so VAT. So, but it, it, there has to be a, a proper chain in terms of uh, revenue collection okay. for it to make it uh, worthwhile in terms of um, getting uh, income from that, from derived from, uh, from VAT. Uh, and, 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 Doctor, any thoughts on this? Well, for the <coughs> VAT, it's not about whether it's going to take place or not. It's already, it's, it's, it's already, it's already in place, yeah. yeah. It's in place already. But, mm -hmm. but the finance ministry is saying something else. The AGF is saying something else this morning okay. that is taken off immediately. 
the finance ministry is saying it has to take, it has to be gazetted, and knowing that gazetting an act takes up to a month. So, do you understand? What, so we don't know. Even the government itself, they are contradicting one another. The finance ministry is saying they're going to wait for it to be gazetted before it kicks off. So that's minimally in a month. But the AGF now is saying, and it is the AGF, Attorney General of the Federation's office, that is supposed to gazette this act. Let's look at the nation newspaper. Tinubu Oyetola extolled a candidate virtues as governor clocks 81. And Mofa hit 33 billion Naira deal, says witness. Arsenal owner dismisses Dangote's bid. And still in the nation newspaper this morning, Elumelu donates technology center to AAU. Court fixes January 24 for Quara landmark matter. And Amotekun only showing car Akildolu Makinde kick. Fury grows over federal government's hammer. Sage Adams YCE Nance Fort Malami. And 7.5% VAT rate has taken off, says the AGF. Uzo Dima orders probe or hacking or Kurocha Iheduha. And lastly, in the nation newspaper this morning, Elza Zaki Dine says IMN and JAM suspends registration in 243 centers. Let's border on the emo situation. What was, what, was your, what was your disposition when the Supreme Court ruled in favor of um, Uzo Dima? Um, again, um, I, I don't know which, which, which um, of the papers you're looking at. The nation newspaper. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's always some, it's always a win for somebody once uh, the, such a ruling is taken place. Uh, I know that there were issues, but I, I would like to also for us to cast the net wider, okay, uh, regionally, because I know these sort of these issues that we're in the, facing the east are also facing other parts of the country. Um, doctor, uh, he he's, he he's, he's barely sworn in, taking the oath of office, and now there's there's a probe in place for other ex governors yeah. or Akim or Kurocha here. Yeah. are. Is, is this what is important at this point in time? No, absolutely not. Um, in the first instance, I think INEC said yesterday, they issued a statement yesterday, that they're not giving him certificate of return yet because they've not gotten a some clarification from the Supreme Court tribunal. But it's been, gone, it's been sworn in now, and now it's rather than focus on the program he has for the people of Imo State, it's not, it's, it's not the only one. This is how our uh, supposed leaders or governors, yeah. this is how they come when they win, they speak fire. <coughs> now he's coming to say he wants to probe his predecessors. Now, I, I can tell you in the next four years, it's going to be battle back and front, and the emo people are going to be on the losing hand. Because he, he, if he has come out after they've been sworn in yes. and said, these are my programs, for emo people, then that's fine. Then underneath, discreetly, begin to work on your probing. Yes. Then it comes out. That shows that you are a process and you have equity, justice, and people's governance system. I'm not sure how you can work on uh, a probe under under the um, under the lens for um, as, as um, doctor is trying to state. But what I will say is that I mean there has been a push generally across Nigeria as I said earlier on, yeah. in terms of ensuring that governorships or governors and the immunity under the constitution is somewhat uh, minimized or at least restructured. Yeah. Because I know that a lot of the times the governors tend not to have, um, governors tend to, tend to skate over uh, certain uh, actions they, they took while they were in, in, in government, yeah. for lack of a better word. And um, yes, I agree with what Doctor is saying in the sense that, yes, you need to make sure that you focus on your agenda and your policies for your term in office yes. and your mandates. But at the same time as well, there has to be some level of accountability. You know. Yeah, but one would expect, I mean, you've just taken over office. You, mm -hmm. You've hardly taken your oath of office. And yeah. the next thing you're doing is you want to probe other governors of the state. I mean, should, so that, should that be his priority let's, at let's, this let's point look. in okay, time? So in terms of priority... It's, it's actually accounts of, of, of the state, everywhere the accounts of the state Even was, without the authority. You know, to be, to be suspended and no transaction should... I agree. Yes. I, I, I do. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I, have, I have read the issues. But the thing about it as well, at the end of the day, is that let's look at it from the reverse side as well. Okay. So in terms of continuity... I'm not in any way 
uh, and endorsing the process in which he has taken. But in terms of trying to put a structure together where there's a level of accountability, I think it's really important because at the end of the day, a lot of the fallbacks of any action that were taken in the previous government will rest squarely on his shoulders. And it's almost a way of clearing your, uh, clearing the, uh, your, your house, for lack of a better word, yeah. in order to start afresh. So uh, what yeah, I would yeah. say, for him, if you, it, I, I understand what you're saying, but if you actually want to prove that you're a person of accountability, what he should have done when it was declared is to go ahead and declare his assets publicly. Good and point. Yeah, he should have done I that. Agree. Okay. Because if, if you want to make a change, it should start with you. So yes, I agree that there so should be you, a process. It's just the same fire that no, been Dr. blowing Femi, I, agree with, I agree with exactly what you're saying. Within, that, within the, the realms or the purview of what he's trying to accomplish, yes. that should also, the, there should be quid pro quo. Yeah. In, in, according to the Latin, um, according to academics, yes, show your hand and I show my hand, yeah. basically. Okay. Yeah. So, in, in, I'm not, but you're not, one, one action will not discountenance or take, a, take away from another action, what I'm trying to say as yeah. well. Oh, let's, let's all bring everything to the table and the table have a collective okay. accountability. All right, let's go to the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Um, there's an opinion piece right here by Ulu Fasa and says President Buhari is not living up to his reputation for frugality. Imo, here they are, cries foul as Uzodima takes oath. Earthmen flee on the community, abandon 200 cows. And Nigeria's crude oil production dips by 95,000 pounds per day. And also, Southwest governors, no going back on Operation Amotekun, will pursue it to logical conclusion, says Akiru Dulu. We're ready to copy it, Middle Belt leader says, and Malami lacks power to ban it. Makinde, Amotekun was come to stay, says Soinka. No law prohibits establishment of Amotekun, Afeb Babalola. Why we pull down the last statute, says mm -hmm. the Lagos State Government. Armed Forces Remembrance Day, governors seek better welfare for Hero's family. And Ile Arugbo, judge urges parties to explore out of court settlement. What would we want to border on this morning in Vanguard? Just to clar for clarification as yes. well, it, it's, it, the, my, 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 my theory on accountability has absolutely nothing to do with the players in, in this particular instance. Okay. So it doesn't have anything to do with Ihe Diohad, has nothing to do with Uzo Dima as people. It's just specifically about the, the notion of the idea of accountability and how to structure that moving forward for governorships. Okay, but the, the people involved in this, it's, it's a system, it's systemic, but people, people run the system, and so we can't not totally negate the... No, the, no, I'm the, not negating them. All yes. I'm saying is that there, there's a bigger picture. Picture, okay. Yes, there's a yes. bigger picture beyond the players that are um, acting, exactly. or, uh, yeah, within the, um, within the play, okay. for lack of a better word. Doctor? Yeah, all I want to say, you see, all these stories, you, all the headlines, yes. uh, it just comes back to what I always say, <laughs> that the people, Nigerian people, we need to brace up because I just feel this is my own opinion. The our so called rulers or leaders they just throw things at us to be debating while they do others. We have a series of things there that are, for me, you think it's deflectionary, you think yes, it's a distraction. I, 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 I feel it's distractional, and there's no none of these headlines have a direct benefit to the common man on the street. In Nigeria, security, security, it's just for the security, it's, it's security is a big, big issue. issue. For yeah, coming no. down on the street. Yeah, but but the, the security they're saying is illegal. <laughs> so how how does the how does I don't the think by putting by putting a, a wool over the eyes is going to solve the problem. Yes. I think we should still have those headlines out there, and out of those ashes we should ar arise the phoenix. Oh, yeah, the phoenix. Yes. Yeah, the, those conversations have to be had. I yes. agree with you, Benny. Yeah, those are uh, and now the, the middle belt is saying the middle belt leaders are saying they will also replicate they will that's copy like they copy one, what the southwest is that's done. one of the reasons why it's been proscribed as illegal someone somewhere is scared and which is, is rightly they have they have rightly they are they have right to be should we, should we say concerns yeah they're, they're, concerned. they're concerned yeah yes. they're concerned yeah. because yeah. now in nigeria where the country is perceived not to be a process system where people can hijack such uh, outfits for their mm -hmm. own selfish benefits. So I understand well on that side for the federal government saying this, but look, the federal government heard they were there. They were, the, this discussion went on for over six months before it was launched. There was a communique agreed at a summit in Oyo State by Western governors. Yes. And they said this was what came out. The federal government cannot tell me they didn't have any uh, information about this, and you waited till it's launched 
before you now say it's illegal. For me, it's act of irresponsibility on both sides. Now, who, who should take um, who should take the, the blame for this? Ify, because at the end of the day, there, there will have been consultations, there will have been deliberations. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't think the South Red Governor just came all of a sudden from nowhere and, and inaugurated um, Operation Amotekun without the knowledge, without the federal government being privy. Now, what what do we see playing out here? At the I, end of the day? I, I think it's a, it's a simple, a classic situation as as as, as with. Um, the issues, um, the PNID issue as well. And, and bear in mind, sorry to cut yeah. you, and bear in mind that we have other security outfits in the north. I mean, we have we have of, of, yes, of the, J, the JTF. And so, I mean, if they're in existence, then why why is Amor taking so much of a threat to to? Because Amor could put it squarely in the face of every single Nigerian, and I think that is what the challenge is. And I think that they don't want to be seen as not as as not being able to function separately from. What the um, what the gov um, gov government is providing for mm. us. All right, let's take a look at this day. The headlines in this day newspaper: Elumelu donates technology center to Ambrose Lee University, and federal government begins implementation of 7.5 percent VAT rate. Southwest governors resist. Federal government says no going back on Amotekun. Don't backtrack, showing cartel states. SANs knock Malami, and here they are. Supreme Court truncated. Will um, truncated will of Imo people, who's a Dima sworn in as governor. And also bandits attack AMS convoy in Kaduna, kill six, abduct others. And we're back to security issues. There have been, been attacks in Kaduna, also in Plateau um, last yeah. weekend. And the issue of security cannot be overemphasized. Yeah. It's 2020 and the administration of President Mahmoud Wari has the next, the next three years to resolve this issue. What, what is critical at this point for this current administration? You're, you make a very good point. Yeah. Mission critical is to ensure that the state as a whole is preserved. And the only way it can be preserved is general, the general security of the country. I mean, every country in Africa has had this problem at one point in time. It's one of the top three issues that most uh, people, uh, most, uh, most officials deal with in yes. terms of uh, ruling an African country. And that's what has to be done. Doctor? Yeah. Um, I will... I will make reference to what Professor Sage, who's an advisor yeah. uh, and is a son to the federal government, how he kicked at what uh, the AGF said about the uh, Operation Amoteco. He actually men mentioned that community policing, community security, which is local, is what Amoteco should be. If there is any concern by the federal government, all they need to do is to tweak Operation Amoteco to be a local community outfit, look at their operations, look at their strategy, how can they, be, uh, can they perform to support <coughs> and enhance our police, our federal government policing system yes. that seems to have failed in our, uh, to an extent. Not, they don't have the uh, human capacity to, go, uh, to police Nigeria. We've seen that over the years, like you said. And this government or this administration came on, on the back of we are going to bring security of lives and properties. Yes. And we have not seen that in the last four years. Okay, uh, in parting shorts, now um, Oluf, Olufasan said that um, Buari has not lived up to his reputation for frugality. Um, if you let's wrap up with you, your, your parting shorts on this. Or oh, frugality yeah. with, with um, <laughs> I just feel that <laughs> when once um, absolute power corrupts, corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So at the point where you are you're touting EFCC and corruption as your main focus, yes. right? You have to come correctly, as they say, in local parlance. Doctor, absolutely, I agree with what she just said. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Um, Policy analyst Ifi Oji and also Dr. Femi Adigoke, public affairs analyst, for being part of Off the Press this morning. Stay with us, Off the Press. We're back tomorrow, same time. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark. Good morning. <laughs>